Hello and welcome back to Kitty Place Morrowind. I'm Nighty, the Black Panther Kitty, and I'll be your host for this episode. When we last left off, we were on our way to the fields of Kumu, trying to do the pilgrimage of the Seven Graces. Um, this is the third and last recording before the first episode actually airs. But on the other hand, this recording is a little bit special because I'm actually doing it while streaming live. So let's see how this will hold up. <clears throat> so I'm currently heading to the fields of Kumu. And as you might remember, we already have been there once because we already brought a pilgrim there. So it's going towards Pelagia, then taking a turn towards Surin, and then we come across the fields of Kumu. And I think I should first select our magic. So if that red up there attacks, or let, rather let's let's just provoke that fight. I mean we need to we need to train our magic, as you can see. Or Fatigue actually impacts our magic, so I'm going to take a potion of Restore Fatigue. And even though I picked up three potions, it only used one. There we go. This will train up our magic. And let's take the tasty red meat. And head on. So yep, this there is another fight. Is there another rat? Or who is attacking us? Ah, it's a cliff racer. Let's see if we can cast a spell up there. Yes, we can actually hit the cliff racer up there. That's neat. Now we don't have enough magicka, no problem. We also have restore magicka potions. And we can cast on because else we would have needed to wait until this cliff racer decides to come down and now we could just kill him in flight. These are actually, the, the AI on these are actually pretty annoying because as I said you need to wait for them to actually come down so you can attack them with melee weapons and so you're, you're in, stuck in a fight although you don't get attacked because they're up there and you can't attack them, and it's, it's just it's just annoying that you're in fight mode, and, and yeah, that, that's the way. Onwards to Surin, and uh, we don't we don't want that basically. So also by running here, we're training our athletics, making us uh, able to run faster. This is, I could now do the default, well, cheat in air quotes, um, which is line yourself up against the wall, press the Q key, which I er actually pressed. I'm currently not pressing any button on the keyboard, just moving my mouse, because if you press the Q key, uh, you enable auto run, which means that your character runs for as long as, uh, as you don't press the Q key again, or don't press uh, WRS, which is forward and backward, of, of course. Standard WASD controls. And you can do this, line yourself up against the wall, and then just run against the wall overnight, go to sleep, and when you wake up, your athletic skill is up through the roof. Under sun and sky, Outlander, we greet you warmly. Thank you, Nefrasa Dralor. Yeah, this is the woman that we helped um, get here. That we protected and and showed the way to this place. So now we're go we're a pilgrim ourselves. So we're going to get, go to the fields of Kumu Shrine, read it, offer the muck that we should have in our inventory. Let me quickly check. There it is, and receive a blessing. Would you like to donate muck and ask for a blessing? Yes. Grace of humility. Thank you for your humility, Lord Vivek. I shall neither strut nor preen in vanity, but shall know and give thanks for my place in the greater world. And let's see what we got. 
Oh, feather, 100 points, which means that um, from the amount of weight that we carry, 100 points are um, subtracted. So now we only carry one point. I should actually check where we need to go next, right? The Pilgrim's Path. Shrine number two, to stop the moon, the Shrine of Daring. When Shiogorath rebelled against the tribunal, he tricked the moon Bardao into forsaking its appointed path through oblivion. The mad star inspired the moon to hurl itself upon Vivek's new city, which Shiogorath claimed was built in mockery of the heavens. When Vivek learned of Shiogorath's scheme, he froze the rogue moon in the sky with a single gesture and the disgrace of his countenance. Overwhelmed by the courage and daring of Vivek, the moon Bardao swore itself to eternal service of the tribunal and all its works. Thus, the new moon now stands guard over the palace and serves as a citadel for the temple's ordinators. The Shrine of Daring is found in the city of Vivek, in the temple district, along the western wall of the High Fane, the great temple Varnfell. When you address the shrine, it's customary to leave behind a potion of rising force. Suitable potions may be purchased from the temple. Homemade potions are not acceptable. Well, let's get to Vivek, which means we just go back. If we check the map, we just go back down here. And we actually passed a sign which pointed us towards Vivek. And yes, I'm only going to walk there once. Once we've actually been there, I'm going to use fast travel. So, as you can see, the paths, do we actually know the, oh, we could actually use, we could, we could well, this only takes us to Belmora, too bad. I just thought about using divine intervention to go to the nearest temple, which should be in Belmora, and then um, walk from there, but basically the distance is not that that much shorter. So in becoming a mage, of course, we need to do we have anything else that we could use for learning. No, there's nothing much that we can actually. I was thinking about doing some magic learning, but we can't. Let's see here. It says, does it say Vivek on here? I think we need to cross this area and head over there, even though we're walking north. I think we want to go to Pelagiat first. That's here. So there are many ways. As a famous book author once wrote, there are many ways to end more pork. Or people say there are many ways to end more pork. But uh, that's actually wrong. There are many ways that lead away from end more pork, but the people just walk them into the wrong direction. And it's the same. There are many ways away from Vivek, but we're now going to walk it. Walk one of them in the wrong direction, so we arrive there. Heading to Pelagiad. Remember the place where we helped the two people fall in love. The um, the rogue and the woman that he mugged. We actually should meet them, or at least the woman on our way. And there she is. So it seems like they still haven't met up yet. We will check on them again, and there it says Pelagiat and Vivek, this is the route that we need to go. We will check up on them to see if their love actually will unfold. don't seem to remember how to enable the, van the third person view. I'm 
not very good at playing in third person view to be honest but especially when walking long distances um, that would look way neater i might actually check that up how to do this let's see plug it on something back road okay so basically this is just the two different roads into the city i might actually check check out how that works basically checking the mapping in between the two episodes which will still be on stream um, to see and and to, to, to see how to do this currently struggling for words to see how to do this and to be able to use a third person camera when we're walking longer distances so you can actually see the our character I mean we have taken a great Come on, walk on, please. We actually have taken a great um, amount of work to dress him properly, haven't we? So, this will take another while. We're now still on our way to Vivek. As you can see, we're now entering parts of the map that we haven't experienced. Uh, explored yet. Yes, exp was the right way to start the word. And there is someone over there. Let's drop a quick save because he could try to rob us or simply outright attack us without any reason. Which this game simply does. Hmm, that looks like a match armor or something. I will listen, Outlander, but make it quick. Look at that. It has runes written on them. Greetings, my friend. It is I, Nels Lendo. Nels Lendo? Ah, I see. You've heard of me. I'm not surprised. No, no, do not tremble in fear. Nels Lendo is a reasonable man. Hardly the cutthroat some would make me out to be. I offer you a fair and healthy proposition. Well, what is this proposition, then? A very simple proposition, actually. You will give me 50 septims, and in return, you will be allowed to continue safely on your journey. Nels Lendo gives you his word as a gentleman that, once our transaction has taken place, you have nothing to fear from me. In fact, I can be a very good friend to have. What say you? Yeah. No? Die, Fetcher! Which means he is going to attack us. But before he does so, I'm really quick, because our fatigue is very low, I'm really quick going to restore that fatigue. And ready our magic. Now, thing is, he needs to arm us once, so we can, so it actually registers. Killed us, but we still have restore health potions. As you can see, he has a rather hard um, enchantment on on us. Was damage, and I think we actually just yeah, we just died. So, of course, this is where we drop the quick save. We're not going to talk to him simply, which is kind of weird because we don't talk to him, and this means he doesn't uh, activate this kind of quest line thing. And it also means that um, I'm actually kind of curious. We did quick save. I want to see if if the quest unfolds if we pay him the money. Let's real quick to go through this again. Get the proposition. Pay the money. Channels updated. If you're ever in Palanum, don't disturb by. I'm certain can be of some service to you. So good to see. Let me see what that's. So he likes us now. Um, quests. No, there is no quest for that. So I'm going to load. Basically, it just means we have one. We either kill him or we have one ally. So we're going to kill him later. Because we can't allow any... Uh, any uh, of the what bandits to live. After all, we're going to be... We want to be a mage. Let me real quick take another Restore Fatigue Potion. Can I? Thank you. The kid didn't, didn't let me take the potion because this little critter here is going to 
going to attack us. And we're going to attack back. In the stream chat, someone is currently asking whether we're or whether I'm a furry. I don't actually know if the question is actually meant uh, regarding me as a person or regarding me, my, my the character that I'm playing. But luckily, the answer is both uh, yes to both. Uh, sorry, English isn't my native language. It's <laughs> kind of weird. So let's head over. We are playing Nighty, the uh, Khajiit mage in training. As you may, may have noticed, he's not very good at magic for now. But we also ju basically just started out the game. There it goes. So there is something that looks like a little settlement. Do we already have something? This is actually, as it seems, the beginning of the foreign quarter of the Vic. There is another person. Yes, I am a cautious player. I don't want to just get attacked. But also, I'm a curious kitty, so I'm going to check out what that person is. It's Ravama of Threlis. My time is precious, so make it quick. Just a friendly warning. Don't spook the match. Don't worry, they're completely safe if you don't bother them. But get them riled up and they're trouble, especially the Betty Nitch. What's, what's that Betty Nitch thing then? The Betty Nitch is the tough one. It's the Bull Nitch that's poisonous, but the Betty Nitch is twice as tough and twice as mean. Oh, that's interesting to know. Thank you. I will heed that warning. Well, let's now run against the sign and then head off to Vivek. And we can, can see the city in all its glory. And since we walked to it once, now I'm actually going to use the Mage's Guild transportation to go there and back again. <clears throat> because I'm not going to bore you with that long walk over and over. Of course, unless we want to kill that guy. But then we're specifically walking to that position, right? So, we arrive in Vivek, and the first thing that you see in Vivek is the Foreign Quarter. This is also where the Major Skill and the Fighter Skill are, and lots of other things. But, being on the Pilgrimage of the Seven Graces, we want to go to the Temple District. And we're going to... which is all the way to the south. So we're just going to walk over here, past the foreign quarter, and into the next district. So each of the great houses has its uh, own district here also, which, well, they aren't restricted to uh, to Ashlanders. They aren't also aren't restricted to native people here, basically, which are the Ashlanders. All the others are Outlanders in that case. But no, we can also go there, make um, business with the people, and also, there are also quests here, so yeah, there's also things to do here, but for now, as I said, temple quest. If I flip on the timer, because we wouldn't want to overstretch the recording of the episode, wouldn't we? So we pass the Red Orange District and into the next one. And of course, next time we're in Vivek, we're also going to use the boats to fast travel between the districts. But again, the rule of thumb, or the rule that I made for myself is the first time we visit a place we go there on foot. So as you can see up there is the moon that the journal or the book has talked about. The moon that Vivek froze in place and the reason why we have a shrine here. So now we're just crossing the bridge towards the temple district. 
looking at the guards that are making sure that we're safe here. And now we need to check if we have one of the potions, rising force, I doubt it. So let's see if we can, yes, barter, rising force potion, there it is. Thank you. Because we are in the temple, I assume that this is the person selling the temple stuff. Now let's go and see where the shrine is. First of all, this is a statue. Presumably of Vivek, people are, seem to donate flowers here to offer them. Then there is another shrine. Seems like Vivek striking down a beast. Also flowers are being offered. And there, this is the triangle stone which makes up the actual shrine. Since we're here, I'm going to skip ahead to another shrine to stop the moon. And the grace of daring. Thank you for your daring, Lord Vivek. I shall not shun risk nor hide behind the mask of cautious counsel, for fortune favors the bold. Fortune shaves the bold, the bold <laughs> I nearly said. And what we got is uh, well, basically the potion effect very st strongly for about half a day bestowed upon us. So now we have the rising force, we can actually levitate. There it is, stop the moon blessings, levitate 100 points. For about, it said, uh, the effects last half a day. So let's see the next one. Shrine of Generosity is not the one I wanted to actually do. Well, let, me, let me real quick check. Yeah, it is the Shrine of Generosity, so long after Lord, Lord Nerevar and the Tribunal talking, sh I should talk slower than I might be able to talk in a foreign tongue. Long after Lord Nerevar and the Tribunal triumphed over Dagoth Ur, the people wished to build a monument to the heroes of that war. Vivek thanked them, but said that it would be better to dedicate a monument not only to the glorious heroes, but to all people, great and small, who suffered and died in the war. It became the custom to make offerings here, either in thanks for good fortune or for those less fortunate. The Shrine of Generosity is on the top steps of Vivek's palace, the southernmost canton of Vivek City, which is where we are currently. The customary donation for those in good fortune is 100 gold. So actually, the three shrines that I wanted to go to in succession, because they're all here, are actually listed in succession in the book, so we can just, you know, go through the book in the order that they are placed there. And I just levitated up here. This is the palace shrine. Is this the one? Yes, the donation of 100 gold and ask for the blessing. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity, Lord Vivek. I shall neither hoard nor steal, nor encumber myself with profitless treasures, but shall share freely among house and hearth. Is hearth the correct pronunciation? I, I never really knew how to pronounce that word. Let's see what we got as a blessing. So the mercantile skill is now 10 points higher, and the lux is also 10 times 10, times 10 points higher. 10 times would be kind of kind of weird and kind of really lucky because it means we would have luck 400 but we only got luck 50 which is plus 10 not times 10 okay now let's take a look at our book what is the next shrine it's the puzzle canal the shrine of courtesy in a battle with maroon stegen i guess that's how you pronounce that name vivek gave his own silver longsword to the daedra lord rather than dishonor himself by fighting an unarmed foe. This so impressed the Dremora, the most honorable and chivalrous of Maroon's Dagon's Daedric servants, that they now share a bond of respect and courtesy with the followers of the tribunal, though we must never forget that they are our enemies. The Shrine of Courtesy is found in the heart of the Puzzle Canal, canal I guess, a labyrinth beneath Lord Vivek's palace in the city of Vivek. The journey through the Puzzle Canal can be confusing, and it's suggested that common pilgrims 
carry a scroll of Alm CV intervention in case they get lost. The Dremor the Dremora Crest is found in the center of the puzzle canal and will accept the plain silver longsword if spoken to with courtesy. After Crest accepts the sword, pilgrims must read the inscription on the trail of. It's interesting that we should have a scroll of M. Sylvie intervention because we're doing the temple quests. I would have expected that we should have a scroll of divine intervention. But we do have both intervention scrolls, so we can teleport to the temple, which basically is just outside, or to the nearest fort using um, CV intervention. Now we need to check that we have a silver longsword, or actually make sure that we have one. And I guess we're just going to buy one within the temple. So that girl out there, the woman out there, didn't have any weapons. Let's see if we can find one within the Hall of Wisdom. Sorry. I'm listening. No Go ahead. Here. So that's that's this slight problem when you levitate and go through these small things here. That's the library. I'm pretty sure there is no weapon merchant Go ahead. in the library. Okay, so basically all the doors upstairs are just going to the library. And we have the underworks. Let's see what's there. Okay, that's really just the... Really just... Saint I will listen out, Lander, but make it quick. That was really just the canal. Sometimes in the canals there are vendors. So there's the St. Holmes Canton. The question is, where do we get a silver longsword? I would suggest in the fighter skill of the foreign quarters, which for now are pretty easy to get to because we have the, uh, the levitation on. We can just straight up walk there. And the guilds are up on the highest fame. So let's just levitate up there with our levitation 100. I mean, we have the blessing, why not use it, right? So that upper waist works. That's not where the guilds are, they are actually one part higher. They basically need to get. Isn't there? Ah, yeah, it's. <laughs> it's just this entrance here. The foreign quarter plaza, and there is the fighter skill. And I hope that they actually sell stuff, even though we're not a member. So what do you want? Nope. Oh, but he services. So basically, he just tells us to look around. Let's see if we can get a silver longsword from anyone. Hurry this up, will you? In here. Someone will barter with us, even though we're not a member. <sighs> okay, so the fighter skill services are member only. Since we're, Hurry this up, since will we're you? a mage, we're of course not going to join so the lowly want? fighters. Let me see if I can find another smith. There we have one. A plain Quick layout, sword. Lander. I haven't much time. Iron? Short sword. Basically the exact opposite of what we're looking for, right? No silver long sword. What words do you have for me? So I don't have any words for you. I'm just looking for a silver long sword. There is another smith here. Okay, I'm listening. Do you have, by any chance, a silver long sword? That's a broadsword, arrows, no silver long sword. Silver long sword, there it is. I can't afford the transaction, right? I only have 50 gold and it costs me 150 and my gold, my... I don't believe that my barter skill is that much m Yeah, increased that I... <laughs> that would have been very awesome, actually. No, no. We need to sell stuff. Okay. 
That's not a big problem. By the three. I mean, we don't have much things to duty. sell. But we have stuff, and I don't think... Yep. He doesn't want that. But we can real quick... So that's now a thing. That's now a thing that we're doing, which is basically what is this abusing... About? Well, not a glitch, but <laughs> using the generosity of the major Guild. But for those watching the episode on YouTube, you need to wait until the next episode. And again, the dice roll will determine how many days until this episode actually happens. So, I'm saying bye-bye for you on YouTube. The, guy, the people in the stream, of course, I will stream on and do some more recordings. Roll the dice.